what's up youtube subscribers so if you know you've been rocking out with me for a couple of days we are on episode four going over this book titled he's lying sis by stephen labosa uh uncovering the truth behind his words and actions so we've been going over this i know uh, i've been I, as i shared on other ones for those that don't know me my name is tanya harden aka pastor t uh my goal is just to remind women to encourage women to see themselves through god's eyes through different ministries that god has placed me to just kind of direct and be over and govern and all that great stuff it's just to kind of remind women you know, of the greatness that's on the inside of them. Girl, if you're watching, you're so great. You are so amazing. You are so God's gift. Um, a shameless plug, go join my Women of Destiny um, um, fa uh, Facebook group community. It's on Facebook. It's a private page where I just kind of encourage, you know, through different posts and stuff like that, uh, praying about some other stuff. But I just, I just want to tell you, man, like you're awesome. Like there's nobody like you when God created you and he created you to be a woman, man, you're so powerful. Uh, I dare you to go after you get through watching this video, go check out my videos. It's on my playlist. One of them is called characteristics of women in the Bible. I'm going to always empower you, always remind you of how great you are. Um, maybe nobody ever told you girl, but you great. Listen, you're great. So with that being said, this is episode four of He's Lying Sis. He's Lying Sis. So get your pen and piece of paper. If you have not watched episode, episodes one through three, go back, watch them, okay? You got to go watch them. Uh, but this is episode four. And this title in the book that he's talking about is He Loves You, But He, but he Doesn't Show It. Ooh. Can the church say amen? I'm a kingdom girl, by the way, just in case you didn't know. Um, listen, he loves you, but he doesn't show it. Uh, and I, you know, in my words, he has a funny way of showing you how much he loves you. One thing about this book, when you deep dive into this book, you can buy anywhere. Um, but I would say one thing about this amazing book, I've been married for 20 years. Uh, and you probably, if you have not heard that already, but... Um, I got an opportunity to kind of deep dive into the mindset of this man that deals with single people. Um, and I'm going to attach something that we did at our church Sunday on here that talks about singles living their best life. Um, amazing, 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 uh, season, I believe for always amazing season for single people. But I believe that right now we're in a, a time for me. You know, God just have y'all on my heart and I just want to find out a way to pour. And this dude is blowing my mind when it comes down to being single now. And he talks about this couple by the name of Robert and Michelle. I think that's their name. Yeah, Robert and Michelle. And he talks about how Robert would, was always showing, you know, just saying how much he loved, you know, Michelle. Michelle was blown away that, oh my God, this dude loved me, you know, and I'm I'm doing the Tanya Nye's version, so you got to read the book for yourself, but I'm doing the Tanya Nye's version of how, oh my God, like Michelle was like, oh my goodness, like he loves me, you know, he keeps saying it. When there were dudes, maybe there was some guys around you that didn't tell you that they love you, but all of a sudden you got this guy now and he's telling you that he loves you. I want to make it clear, this is not to bash men, but to encourage women. So maybe he told you that he loved you and he was the first dude in a long time that I've told you that he loved you. I'm you, you, me. We've been, I've been where you've been in that area. I don't care if it has been a long time, but I just remember as I was reading this, it took me back before my husband and I got married, how, you know, you get this guy and you really think he loves you and you really think he has your best interest in heart. And Michelle was this way. She thought, oh my God, he loves me. He loves me. And while they were together, he hugged on her. He loved on her. They held hands. They did all the things that couples would do. They were officially a couple. We're, we're in this relationship together. But so can somebody say but? But that was a but when it came to it. But Michelle was very, very confused. She was didn't understand, you know, what was going on. Y'all know it had to be a but in there, right? So he, she didn't understand what was going on. And this is what happened is that even though Robert was telling her that he loved her and just didn't mind sharing his feelings with her on how much he loved her, one of the things that he did not do, check this out, he left her so confused because when she called him, he didn't return her call for a couple of weeks. And so now 
She's confused. She's confused at the fact that even though he's saying he's lo he loves me, but what's happening is is that number one, she talks about how he he he's terribly inconsistent. He says how the man was inconsistent. You know, one minute he was all over her, the next minute he wasn't. One minute he loved her, one minute he didn't. You know, he was just all over the place. Not only of the inconsistency, but maybe it's because of his actions. His actions does not show you. It doesn't match up with what he said. He's saying the right words. He's saying how he loves you. Even when you ask him, you know, are you sure? And he comes back and really make up excuses. Oh, man, Steve, talk about it. Steven talks about it. How he makes up excuses about, you know, well, maybe I just don't, I'm, I, I don't know, you know, this is just how I, how I love. I don't know how else to love. And now you have sympathy for this man. And so you decide to stick in a relationship because he said he loved you. Ah! Come here. Because he said he loved you. Or he has so many excuses that are blowing your mind to the point you're like, oh my God, what is going on here? It's like when I'm around him, we're like on cloud 89. But when I'm away from him, it's like, what happened? Or I'm asking him to do different things and it's not happening. Whatever the case may be. Maybe you're at that point. Maybe you're, there's one thing that he said. I said, I wanted to read it. He said this, he said, Michelle was often battling confusion as to whether or not Robert was sent, was sincere in his feelings, his verbal expressiveness and willingness to say, I love you and want you in my life wasn't really back, backed up with in, any actions. However, the fact that he shared his feelings at all often allowed his words to overshadow his lack of showing Michelle his love outwardly. Michelle felt like, okay, there's something here worth holding on to. I should definitely keep moving on forward with him. Come here. I should just definitely look, move on forward because he, he it's like he's saying what I really never heard before. Oh, I almost said if you've been there, hard it up. But if you've been there, comment below. Maybe, girl, you me and I'm you. Just come in. I'm you, you're me. We've been there before. But here's the thing that he also talks about. He says this on the same page. He said, you know, he's terribly inconsistent. His actions don't match up with the love that he was constantly professing. Robert had no, had more excuses than he had anything else. More times than not, he won't, he would forget little things. He also wasn't as affectionate as he, as she would like him to be. One day, Michelle decided to hax him about it. When she asked him, this is where the excuses came into play. This is where he started letting her know, you know, man, I had some dysfun dysfunction happen in my family. I had some things to go down. And that may be true. Listen, there are some men out here, out there that really don't know how to express their feelings. They didn't have a dad there, a mom there to show them how to express their feelings. Or they didn't have anyone to teach them how to express their feelings. I told a married couple, I said, listen. When you're not taught how to love someone right, you don't know how to love that person right. But that person, both parties have to be willing to be able to learn how to. Just because it's a bad habit don't mean we can't create this into a good habit of learning how to love me. But this particular dude in this particular chapter, Robert was so busy trying to explain the dysfunction and what happened. And that's where most women we get caught up at. We get caught up in the fact that I'm I'm going to stick in here with you and, and allow you to change. I'm going to give you time. Even though I see the signs, even though I see the chaos, even though I see the craziness, I'm going to go ahead and put up with this. And can I pause and park right there and tell you there's nothing wrong with going through the process if that person is willing, if you start seeing some changes, if you start seeing some growth, because there's nothing like growing together. But when there's no change on how you love me, there's a problem with that. One of the things he said that even though, oh, I'm going to read this. This is the part I want to read to you. Is one of the things he said, a typical man struggle more with expressing their love and their feelings. It can be a struggle for a man not to open up and truly embrace his feelings for you. Let alone tell you all the time that he loves you. Of course, that doesn't apply to every man. But listen, this is what he said. If he can say the words and means them, there should be no reason why he can't show you how he loves you. Amen, preacher uh, Stephen.
prophetess Stephen. Come on. I didn't call the man something else. But if he can keep speaking these words, he should be able to show you. However, you got to understand what type of guy that you're with. But he got to show you how he loves you. So, of course, I'm going to pull some principles. You got to read. Now, that's a juicy chapter. You got to read that for yourself. But I'm going to give you this is what I got out of it. Is that I realized that even though that there are men out there that do have this struggle, that do have this problem. We got to look at the reality. I always tell women this. It's all about how much you're willing to put up with, how much you're willing to take, how much pain you're willing to experience, how much how much energy and time you want to put into a relationship. It's totally up to you. It's all about how much you how much you can handle. So you getting Steven version versus my version of a woman version. It was all about how much I was willing to put up with, how much much I was willing to deal with, but I'm going to tell you this, every woman, as I said to you earlier, that you are a gift to God and you should be treated like a jewel. You should be treated like a diamond. You should not be stringed alone like a little puppy just to be dragging along. But this is what I got out of it. If that reality is, if he loves you, there's four points I'm going to give you. Number one, his actions will show it. His actions will show you. I don't care how many times my husband said that he loved me. I never forget sitting in the bed after he said I was going to marry you. I want to marry you and da, 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 da. Make a long story short, I was going to marry the guy. I decided, no, 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 because your actions are a little bit different. So I'm not going to marry you right now. We were supposed to get married like December 11th of 20, 2000 or whatever. And we didn't get married to December 27th because I noticed that his actions were different than his words. And he didn't realize that he didn't know how to love me. So we had to have a sit down conversation on my needs and what I wanted and what I was looking for and what I could not, uh, I, I, I did not want to allow. Did he get it right in three weeks? No, probably not. Uh, however many weeks it was. No, he did not. But there were some things he, his actions started to show me. He started treating me different. He started treating me kinder. He started treating me the way that I was asking him to treat me. You got to make sure that his actions line up with his words. I don't care how much he says, you got to believe the actions of a person. Not only that, number two, his atmosphere will reflect it. You would even see around his mom, his sister, his cousins. How did he treat them? Is he loving on them? Is he loving towards them? How is he treating them? And when you see how he's treating them, you notice that his atmosphere, go to his house. I always tell people, date a church. I did a, a book, shameless plug, called Church Hurt, but it helped. I say, date the church. I would say, date this person, but date his family as well. Find out how you act. I want to sit back and just see how you act in front of the these people. How's your atmosphere when we're at your house? How, when I walk in your house, is it nasty? Is it disgusting? Do you not care about your appearance at your house? What is it? Or how do, how many people show up at your house? What's going on? Not that I'm there by myself. Okay. Maybe that wasn't a good example, but you understand what I mean. Don't, don't be all there by yourself. If you know you, 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 you in need. Okay. And you in heat. Don't go by yourself. Take a friend. But you want to see how is your atmosphere when you're here. Not only how is your atmosphere, but you want to see how many times are you going to avoid avoid your actions. Are you going to avoid the fact you're going to keep doing it and, and just kind of avoid it and just make up things like I'm going to, if I tell you, Hey, I need more time. I need you to text me three or four times a week. We talked about that on the last video, but I need, I need more time with you. Or I need you to show me your actions and they continue to avoid your feelings and avoid how you feel sugar foot. You may want to just, yeah, you, you may want to number four, which is my last point. If you are not sure about their love for you and you've been in this process for maybe over a year or maybe six, seven months or whatever the case may be, you've been in this process, you may want to abort. Uh-oh, run. Come here. If they're not going to love you the way that they need to be loved, you may want to abort. I know you may want to run. If you've been putting up with this for two, three years, you may want to abort. I know you put a lot of energy, a lot of time into that. But he talks about that in the book. Abort. Run. Leave. Out of the process. He says this. If not, abort quickly and sooner than later. You deserve both his spoken love and his expressed love. No excuses. No excuses. You deserve that. And if you don't see an inch of change, that's a problem. I'm telling you, there's no one that's perfect, okay? Let's make that clear. There's no one out here in these streets that is perfect. There is 
ladies, listen, you're going to have to be willing to put in some type of work with somebody, right? So you don't want to abort every situation, but there are some, some seasons and sometimes you just know that this ain't going to work because you're constantly lying. You're constantly inconsistent. You're constantly not looking at my actions. You're constantly avoiding the conversation, avoiding me, my feelings, avoiding what we're talking about. And if you're constantly feeling that way, maybe this is just not going to work out. But on the other hand, if you're willing and if you see that there's a change that's taking place and you're attracted to this man and you know that, you know, I know I've seen some changes. Uh, first lady, like she keep, <laughs> I say first lady. Yeah. She, he keep just like taking me on a roller coaster, but I'm sure I'm, I see the roller coaster slowing down a little bit. I see we're getting off in some areas of this roller coaster. I see that there's some life in some of these areas. I hate to call it a roller coaster. Let's call it something else. I see, you know, we're on this train, but we're going somewhere. We're not just driving. We're not just riding on the train. We are both going somewhere together. And there are some stops and some pet stops we got to take so that we can kind of learn each other on this level. Be willing to learn. Be willing to put in the work if that person is willing to put in the work with you. I would always say this, get counsel and encourage him to go deal with those issues, to not avoid them, but deal with those issues of hurt, deal with those issues of pain. Come here, woman, come here. I would, I would encourage you, you deal with, if you're this person, Vice versa to the, if you are the woman that is always making up excuses, you're always avoiding, you're always, your love, your, your words say, I love you, but your actions don't come here. You thought you was going to get away. No, ma'am. Yeah. Your actions don't. You got to be able to be willing to deal with the issues of the dysfunction that has happened in your life because that dysfunction, we can only sit in those pity parties for so long. Come on. We, we, we too old for all that. Y'all know that's my new thing. I'm too old for this. Too old for all that. We need to start dealing with our issues so that we can become whole and we can't become whole if we don't deal with our issues. And now we're looking for a man to fill this void, to fill these empty voids that should have been filled from us taking out the time to heal the real us. Ah, oh, what's my saying? There's a real heal you. That's a real heal you. What does that mean? That there's someone on the inside. There's a girl that's ready to burst out of this metamorphosis, of this uh, caterpillar, of this um, butterfly experience. And you are on the edge and you're ready to jump. But you don't know how because you've been stuck in this cocoon for too long. And because you keep trying to get up out of the cocoon, you're at a moment of you want to grow, you want to get out. And now that you're about to burst out of the cocoon, that's that real person that turns into the butterfly that God has created you to be. You are designed for greatness. You are designed for purpose. But you won't know if you stay stuck in the cocoon position. Follow me. Hear me. If you're stuck in a cocoon mindset to where I've been going through, man, everybody, my mama put me through, my cousin put me through, my family put me through, they raped me. I'm not knocking none of that. Deal with that though. Deal with those things and he should also deal with them and you encourage him to deal with those things as well. Listen, he's lying, sis. Four things I told you today. Number one. His act, there's so much I told you, but these is what this is what I got out of the book is that his actions will show you. His action will show you. Reality is his action will show you that he loves you. Reality is his atmosphere, the people around him, the places that where he lives, where he goes, where he hangs out. It's gonna show you if he really loves you. Not only that, if he continues to avoid, that's gonna show you if he really loves you. His actions, if he's avoiding. Or if all of these things are happening, if he's not showing you actions, if he's not showing your his atmosphere is just jacked up, or if he is continuing to avoid, number four, and lastly, abort, you deserve for someone to not just show you, I mean, not to just say they love you, but show you that they love you. Listen, until tomorrow, join me, join me, join me. I'm going to drop the link. I'm going to drop the link until tomorrow. And I'm thinking it's going to be our last one, but I'll let you know. 
uh, if it is. But I pray that you've been enjoying these. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this with someone, one of your single friends. Share these episodes with them, letting them know, man, he's lying, sis. Stop tripping. You too old for that. Don't nobody got time for that. Go ahead and find your boys or let your boys find you and stop playing these games out here. You're too old. We, we, don't, we don't have time. And maybe you're not too old. That's okay, baby. Just hang out. God, God going to send you the man that, that is for you because a man that found a, a wife, find a good thing. I'm telling you. But hey, until next time, check out this single thing right here, right there, right there. Check it out. Check it out. Click on that. Listen to being single and living my best life. Singles. It's all about you. This week, I want to talk to you and have these videos available to you whenever, however. But most of all, go get your book. He's lying, sis amazing. I can't go over this man's whole book. I'm an author. I would be wrong if I did that. So I can only give you just a little bit just to make you want to go get it. Invest in yourself and read this book. If you don't read, get the audio. He has an audio on Amazon for sure that he has an audio on Amazon. But until tomorrow, listen, he's lying, sis. Uncovering the truth behind his words and actions. Until next time, stay blessed.